Well, happy Monday, everyone. I am so excited to end this month's training series with Denise Kayaket, who you can see her beautiful face. And she is going to be talking about our last step in our duplication model, which is leading. So we'll just go over the duplication model quickly. What is leading? And then Denise is going to dive in. She's got some good, good stuff on how to lead. And I just feel like with her going from AED and then to ED to SED in one month, you guys, she definitely knows how to lead the way and to teach her girls how to continue to show up as a leader every day. Um, but she'll go ahead and dive into that. So as you know, we have this duplication model. This is something that we have been preaching. I feel like preaching to the choir, right? And this is really how you build a sustainable business. And what is leading? Leading is really setting the pace for the rest of your team. And I think that this applies at all stages in your business. I think the moment that you purchase your kit, you are already a leader. You are going to be sharing this opportunity with people. You are going to be building your team. And even before you get to your first rank, I feel like you are a leader. You're taking control of your life, your business. And so this is really to just um, this is just like the key part in building a long-term and sustainable business. But I truly believe the moment that you buy your kit, you're already on the path to leadership. This is Denise. I love this part. I, uh, I just feel so grateful that Denise landed in my region. You guys, she is an East Coast transplant. She came from New York and moved to Santa Monica, California. So she's kind of my neighbor. I'm out in San Francisco. She was born in Turkey. Fun fact, she's a dog mama to Cushman. Cushman really thinks he's a human. I mean, watch Denise's stories. He really thinks he's a human. He is the funniest guy you will ever meet. Um, and is just the cutest. She loves her Cushman. She gave up volleyball for marketing, retired from corporate America. She had a great corporate job in marketing in New York and then she traveled for six months. You'll have to share your stories or something because they're gonna be so curious, Denise, but the stories I've heard about her travels are insane, but she literally, if you look at her feed and I'll share her Instagram handle later, she is like the travel queen, but she's gonna get real with you on this call and tell you all about um, really how she models her business and runs her business. But I'm gonna turn it over to you, Denise. I'll let you share the good stuff and I'm going to hop off camera. Well, what an intro. Um, I feel like my girls are on here, so they don't need to hear my story, but I do think that um, I should probably do a call soon on things that you should expect when you're traveling and working your business. Cause I can't say that it's an easy um, thing that you juggle. You know, it takes a lot of sacrifice and commitments. We missed out on so many things that we wanted to be doing because we were prepping for a call or we were trying to be somewhere that had good service. So it wasn't easy. It was definitely something that, you know, it was great that we got to do it. And it was because of this opportunity we were able to. Um, but yeah. So um, for those of you that don't know me, I feel like Jensen just kind of wrapped it up. Um, you know, I think one of the things in this business that you don't realize a skill set that you're going to have to accept and in, in order to grow within the business as a person and as, you know, a business partner to so many others, you have to develop that skill and leadership. So on this call, we're going to be talking about, you know, the process of building leaders, right? How do we help build structures, build leaders, and some of our non-negotiables that, you know, I took from my upline and, and still apply in the business. Um, so before I get started, how to lead? I think this is a question we may often stumble on, at least for me. Um, there are times I can question my leadership and I think it's kind of just human nature. You question things when something isn't happening the way you expect it to be, right? Um, 
So you start asking yourself, you know, if, if you're doing the best that you could be doing, maybe you're struggling with one of your teams versus another one was so much easier to take, uh, you know, to tackle. Um, maybe the other team is having different uh, situations that you haven't dealt with yet before in your business. Um, maybe someone isn't being as easy to, to coach or someone's business isn't growing and you start asking yourself that same question. I feel like it kind of resurfaces itself, right? Could I have done better? Which there's nothing wrong with asking yourself these questions, by the way. I want to say that, and if you relate, please like share in the chat, because I do, I do think it's important that you guys talk about this with your teams when you're questioning things in the long run say listen like i thought the same way you know um am i spending enough time on looking for finding and working towards being a better leader am i constantly refining and improving my skills what can i continue to get better and more competitive with um do i believe i'm working harder than everybody else if not what else can i be doing you know, what, what are other leaders doing that I'm not doing? You start kind of sabotaging yourself like that. You're like, maybe they're doing something different. Maybe they're a better lead. Am I doing everything I can again, every single day to stay in career shape, right? If not, what else can I be doing or should I be doing? Uh, the thing is, you know, we should always be in the process of, uh, becoming a better version of ourselves in general in life. Right. Uh, John Maxwell says this, like the only guarantee for your tomorrow is that you are growing today, whether that's personally, whether that's business aspect and relationships, whatever that is. Um, and another thing that he said that I, it really resonates with me when it comes to leadership is we're only at our best guys when we're still stretching. Okay. We have got, we have got to stretch. We have got to constantly get better. I don't care if two years ago you were the top of the top and the best leader there ever was. Two years later, if you're still doing the practicing the same things and you're not, you know, adapting to newer problems that your, you know, team and your business might be having, you're going to backtrack, right? It doesn't matter um, unless we're stretching. So what does it mean to be a leader and how do we breed more leaders? So it's a question that, I, I want you guys to think about it if you haven't thought about it. Um, we're a leader because we know how to, and I've said this so many times, so for my girls who you're hearing this so many times, you've heard this before, okay? You're a leader because you're prioritizing your needs before your own. You know, I might spend a whole day educating myself on something in an area that I know will benefit the team rather than maybe that day only I won't focus on growing my own business. Um, the month, perfect example, um, the month our team hit SCD, SCD was not on my mind. You know, I was really excited to see that we were on track and it was great, but it just wasn't my priority. Point and simple. I was too busy serving everyone else and I wanted to serve everybody else. Um, another thing as a leader, I personally find so powerful is that you've got to own up to your mistakes. You've got to call yourself out. I think if you do that already in life, you got to, you got to practice it in your business, right? You know, because I want them to do better than I did. I'm very stern about failure because I want them to be prepared to get right back up. Um, another thing that I read recently, and it was, it's so, it's such a like fact moment. Talent can help us achieve success, but character will help you sustain success, right? So we can get to the top of the company. We can be SED, we can be the CEO, whatever, but without being the best leader, right? Without knowing everything, but we can't sustain it without having a good character. So I often communicate this to our team as well. We don't become leaders when we hit a certain title, right? The sooner we accept that, the sooner we can step into our leadership more. And the sooner we set that tone, the same tone you're setting for your team. So as leaders, we're constantly building relationships with our business partners, constantly. Like the moment you sign somebody on, you are building a relationship together. It's a process of them trusting you. So we believe in ourselves already, but most importantly, our job also is to believe in everybody else, right? In, in your business partners. 
I'm a big believer in people that I will say that's probably one of my strengths that I'd like to call out their strengths. You know, we're all great at something. Everyone has their like strong assets. Um, and one of the most powerful things, again, you can do as leader, as a leader in your business is believe in the people, right? Before they believe in themselves. Um, you know, we got to see the vision, the bigger picture before they do. This allows them to size up situations. They start seeing the possibilities and puzzling it all together, connecting the past of the stuff that they've done with what's to come and recognize their own vision. So how do we step back, but also continue to compliment, compliment our, our leaders? Um, because we all, we all know this, right? It's not about us making leaders feel good. Our job is to help them be good and do good. So yeah, I like to identify their strengths. I like to vocalize it. Are you kidding? Jessica, your volume. Wow, you're seriously unbelievable with VIPs. You totally got this. What's our game plan? Seriously, I was never good at personal volume when I first got started. You are so consistent and so on top of your team. I will say next month, let's get a little bit more consistent with our stories on social media. Let's get on the phone for 15 minutes and chat and how we can do that. But you guys are crushing it. Well, how are we, you know, hitting our, I'm not only telling them something they're so good at, but I'm also talking about something that we need to work on to better in our, in their business. Right. Because I think a lot of the times, um, people get leadership confused and it's normal because we don't really, I say this all the time. I think there's really bad managers and management out there in the world outside of money um, because people just kind of get hired into a position or they get promoted into a position and they're not trained on the responsibilities or having empathy or understanding people or how to educate people to get in, to get to the same place as they are. Right. Um, so people think they have power as leaders rather than remembering that it's not about having power. It's about empowering others. We, we got to practice what we preach, but we also, um, we got to practice what we teach. I like thought that I was uh, repeating myself. So, and which is going to lead me to like the one thing that is going to be the most important thing. If this is something you feel that you lack in, this is where we have to start improving our leadership. So the one thing that I think is an all purpose instrument of leadership, it'd be communication. Okay. Um, so three standards you need to give to communicate. We got to be consistent consistency. You hear that a lot in this business, right? Nothing should confuse or frustrate your teams. Like if we can't make up our minds, that's going to piss them off. That's going to confuse them, you know, or if we fall off when things get tough and, and we disappear, that's not being consistent. You got to go through everything together, highs and the lows. You got to communicate and, and you got to be consistent in your business. Um, being clear, right. In your communication, your team, your team can't execute if they don't understand and know what is being asked for of them. Like, that you have to be very clear. And if there's no, if there's a misunderstanding, we got to get that clarified and be courteous in everything. We have to be courteous. I don't even know if there's anything that I need to even get into to explain that. So process of building leaders for me, this is something that I, I think I repeat on a daily basis until, until I don't have to for the people that I repeat it to. Number one, feed back. Okay. This goes back to number one thing that you got to do in communication. Why is feedback important when we're breeding leaders? Because I don't think anyone's born a leader. Okay. I think people are made into leaders. So when we're giving feedback, we have to remember the formula. It has to be actionable so it can help that person improve their performance, but we can't just come in and say something is wrong without explaining how the person can improve and why it's important to make that change for next time. Also, none of this matters if we're not practicing the same behavior, right? So, you know, I actually, personally, I'll say this, I thought I responded well to feedback, considering it was a part of what I did for living, right? I was constantly, I, um, Jensen said marketing, but um, I was an art director. <laughs> so 
I was basically the creative um, person to execute, design, ideas, whatever. Um, so I was constantly told to change something I was so thrilled about that I came up with this idea or I felt so passionate about my design. And next thing you know, it would get torn apart at a pitch because I didn't really rally the vision um, of the client with mine. So I thought I was super like, you know, like that was my one good thing. I didn't really need that much improvement on when I came into this business. My upline, um, Brittany Sauer, uh, who also is like my family. She's like one of my best friends. So when she gave me feedback, I would react, you know what? No, that's not what I meant. I do that too. It's fine. I'd be so annoyed. Okay. It's, so in our nature to feel that way if we're not comfortable with feedback or if we think we know what we did was totally not in the wrong i'd be frustrated it was clear that i still had areas i needed to improve on receiving feedback so the formula is first of all number one you've got to nip it in the butt with your leaders in the making okay um step one approach immediately not oh yeah i have to talk to her about it like i want to know if you guys do that because I hear that often, like, oh yeah, no, I know she's been doing that. I need to talk to her about it. Oh yeah, I've seen him um, you know, talk to people that way. It's something that I've been wanting to address. It, is, it makes me wanna rip my hair out. I'm like, why are we waiting? What are we waiting for? That's not fair to them either. You know, they need, they need that feedback. They don't know that they're making a mistake every time. It could be just sim as simple as, guys, the most simple thing I can say is if you have a new market partner that signed up and there is a sale going on and on their social media, maybe they're not social media um, tech savvy yet or whatever, and they story the sale as a screenshot um, from their email and say, sale, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how you're their upline. If you don't tell them right there and then that is not right and how we can and why it's not right and how we can improve that. That is just like a simple thing. You know, that's your brand new business partner. You've got to knit things in the butt right away and approach them. Step two, elaborate your rationale. Now we explain why and how we need to improve. Um, I think this is also in human nature. We avoid uncomfortable conversations. We have this assumption that we're going to make somebody feel upset. We're going to make, feel, make somebody feel, um, you know, frustrated or annoyed. You don't want to hurt it. No, this is a business. Everyone who says yes to this, I mean, I want to say everyone who wants to succeed in this, who wants to be SED, who wants to start making, you know, that kind of income that they've been wanting since day one, they want to be told how to make things right one way or another, whether they realize it right there and then, or six months later, they might say, oh, now I understand what you were saying six months ago. So we can't avoid having those uncomfortable conversations. Okay. Because when we do, when we avoid a problem, you already know what happens. It becomes a bigger problem. So my advice, this is something that I learned through Brittany and I've seen other leaders coach through their teams, make it an area of opportunity, give examples, you know, got to celebrate what's working and address what's not. You know, I think for you, an area of opportunity where we can improve on that's it. It's simple. You don't have to use those exact words, but it's an area of opportunity, how we're going to improve. Another thing that was a game changing thing in the business in communication is we got us and you can look this up. Like it's everywhere has nothing to do with the business. It's how we say things. I don't like to pull the foreign card, but sometimes I say things the way I'm thinking them. I swear to God, when I read it back, I'm like, could have thrown a comma in there. Didn't need that word in there. You didn't need to say you, you should have said we, that really changes the tone of everything. And now this could have came off a little bit better. So that's something that really changed for me in the last two years. Say we, instead of you, you know, it's something we need to improve on. We're a team. So big, 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 um, game changing thing that you can do while you're breeding your leaders. Number two, communication. Okay understanding and listening. I feel like the whole, this entire call, I've been talking about communication, but it is so important. And I'm not going to say out of 365 days, there's not going to be one day where you just aren't your, aren't the best communicator. Maybe you're not being the best listener. Maybe you're not being the best version of you and you will make up for it as long as you're aware of it. Right. 
But in order for us to understand situations, in order for us to be problem solvers, we have to listen to anyone to understand and fix it. If we don't, we can't solve the situation. We, we, we cannot solve the equation. So we have to embrace the problems, okay? We have to look for them, learn from them, and leverage them. You know, I'm a big questions girl. If someone's coming to me with what they assume might be a problem or a problem that they're having, I need to understand. So I ask questions. Ask any on my team. If anyone's on here, they'll say it. If someone comes to me, usually I'm going to say, well, what do we say to that person? Or how did this, well, why did that person respond this way? What was our initial approach? You know, I'm not going to think you're at fault. Or I don't think maybe you, um, your follow-up follow-ups need to change in the way you're communicating with your potentials. Maybe it's the way our approach was. So it's just asking the questions is going to lead me to how I can help better, uh, how I can help advise them in the in the best way possible. You know, you know that saying. There's two sides to every story. So I tell my leaders I have to ask the right questions. Um, number three, expectations. What is expected of me? because then what are my expectations of our team? As leaders, we acknowledge we gotta pave the way, okay? We gotta pave, pave the way first. We climb that hill like Maxwell always says. Being first isn't fun because we get to make the mistakes and learn from them, but it's not something that we're always in the mood to do. But we know that, you know, with leadership, it, it leads to success and success brings responsibility, which also can scare a lot of people. But guess what? As a leader in this business, especially if serving for others is below you, leadership is beyond you. Okay. I'll say that again, because it's so important as a leader, especially in this business, if serving for others is below you, leadership is beyond you. You have to accept that you're going to grow into leadership. You don't need to be perfect at it right now. No one is. No one is even while they're improving, right? So just accept that you're going to step into your leadership whenever that might, whenever that may be for you. Um, another thing that Maxwell talks about is great leaders always pay the price first. It's not a perk. It's a price that we have to pay. We find the path, like we just said, and we set the example. So when we ask our teams of anything, are you doing it yourself, right? These expectations we want to set, these high bars that we want to set, are we doing that for ourselves and our business? Because we all know this. We do not, like we can, I can sit here and say all of this on a call, but if I'm not doing this, none of my girls are going to believe or listen to this either, right? You, you inspire people by doing, not by the titles or ranks, you know, um, this is actually something I really, really wanted to talk about, okay, lately, and everyone else will probably relate to this question, whatever rank you might be, but this is a question that, um, that has that i've been receiving in the last few months i'm not offended by it it's just interesting what makes people think that especially if you understand our compensation plan but i've been getting the question so now that you've hit the top do you have to work less i'm going to leave the, i'm going to tie this back into expectations but i chuckled the first few times and then i realized how common that is for everyone to think so I've really thought about the answer, okay? I, I started thinking about my journey in this business. Um, I started thinking about all the work that I've done in the last two and a half years. When we bring someone onto this business, we're essentially like a mom or like a teacher, I should say, right? We have to raise them right. Like we have to do the right, like that's why we call it the duplication process as long as we're doing that the proper way. Um, and then there's people like, you know, excuse me, there's kids that either listen well or don't. Some never want to move out of their parents' home. Some of us are out of the house the moment we turn 18. So when I started thinking about my process in this, uh, my journey in this business, um, it brought me back to when I hit MMB. Okay. I left the nest immediately. I, it, Brittany knows this, um, because that was what was expected of me, but it was also not what I was expecting it to be if that makes any sense. But so to go back to that question, I don't know guys the difference between MMB or SED, okay? Aside from my SED email support, God bless, 
But like, of course, our trainings improve. Of course, our leadership improves. Of course, the duplication process, maybe you're doing better systems for your um, teams. Our business overall improves. But like, as I grew and experienced scenarios that I didn't understand before, I went back to my upline, my person, Brittany, who shaped me into the leader I was becoming and wanted her to be more involved. So I went, I, when I think back, like, do I have to do work? Yeah, I work just as hard. If not, um, I do more things that I, I didn't do two years ago, but it's because I took on that, um, uh, like that was expected of me when I hit MMB to become the leader that I needed to be. And that bar was set for me through my upline. So that's what we need to do with our leaders. So what are those expectations, right? I feel like MMB, I think any rank, there should be some sort of like leadership that you're gaining and you are, but MMB is our first leadership rank in our compensation plan. So when you're here, this is when we file for a divorce, okay? I heard Brittany say this on a call two, two years ago, and I heard her loud and clear. This is a non-negotiable to me. This is an area of opportunity, break the habit of constantly relying. If you think about it, we do this with everything. You constantly go to your friends about what to say back to a guy or a man or a woman you're flirting with, or you constantly have someone help you um, type up a response for an interview or constantly help you get dressed for a date. It's just a bad habit you picked up. Like you can do those things for fun here and there, but you need to like, you know, be your own person. You need to be your own leader and you need to lead your team. You want your, I want your team to look up to you, not me. I want you to come and ask me on the side. I don't need your team to know that the answer came from me. You know, like we're still going to work together, but it's time for us to file for that divorce. Okay. So every person, every relationship is different in life, business, whatever. So some divorces are going to take longer than others, right? So you might want to slowly let go um, of some of your business partners, right? Because some of them, you guys are hitting MMB in like two days now. So I don't expect someone who's MMB in, in a second to do, to know it all, to know everything and to lead everything. But I expect them to start slowly, you know, stepping into it. So um, as situational as that is, we still have to file for that divorce. No more carpooling, okay? No more car carpooling um, their teams. We can't pick up every three-way opportunity call. We can't do every welcome call. We cannot take on every responsibility that a leader should be taking on. So, you know, the way I would like to go at it is I like to compliment. I want to be there to compliment their business and their leadership, but I'm not, you know, um, at all stepping into stepping in their way. I love what you sent in your group chat today. So on your team call tomorrow night, I'd love for you to talk about X, Y, and Z. I want to take a step back. I want the spotlight to be on you and your girls to feel comfortable going to you. I want them to look up to you and start stepping into your leadership. I'm only repeating guys, something that Brittany told me, I want to step back. I stuttered the first time she put me uh, on, a, on the spot to do an onboarding. I was like, I can't do this and handed the phone back to her. Second time, I blocked out completely. Like, don't remember it because I was reading everything. Um, and I think I did it. Like I split the call with somebody else. Regardless, an onboarding is something that we need to have everybody do right away when they hit MMB. That's something that we need to be able to get good at and get confident. And, and that's how onboarding is the beginning of your duplication process with your teams. Um, and the biggest thing I can say, the, the one thing that you want to do though, is I understand we all get busy. I understand like, you know, so many things can get thrown in our way, but one way or another, whether you can do it in the beginning when they're starting out or you catch on later on, you got to go on their first power hour, or their first potential call or their, um, their onboarding. Because again, one of the most important things we can do when we're stepping back so that they can step in is to give feedback so that they can grow and make sure that they're, you know, you can address those things that they need to improve on. Um, they trust you guys. So you have to trust them because I think every one of us feel super controlling and we think, Oh, oh my God, if I step back, what am I going to do? Like hope for the best. It's all at the, at the end of the day, you can't, you have to let go. You have to let 
your leaders step up, have them pick mentors. Who do they look up to in this business or just as an entrepreneur, motivational speakers, have them pick people that they look up to. We become like the people we want to be surrounding ourselves with in that environment. So that means if I'm listening to a podcast about one person, I'm also reading about their, about that person's speaker's life, their failures. I'm obsessed with them. I probably know where they live. I don't want to be them. I want to be inspired and find my own version. So that's what we need to do as leaders. And I'm finished. Um, in, in order for us to step back, we have to let go. We have to trust. They trusted you from the first place, right? So step back, have them have their mentors, have them, you know, constantly come to you, still build that relationship. That was my biggest mistake. I thought the whole divorcing your upline would be me stepping out of, you know, Brittany. Like, I'm like, she has so much to worry about. She does not need me, you know, like I I don't want to be that other team that she has to worry about. No, it's about working together. It's about communicating. It's about raising the bar, um, together. Um, does anybody have any questions they want to ask? I am done. I love that. That was so good. So many gold nuggets, honestly, and which is fitting because I have this quote (laughs) here. (laughs) Great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, always about the goal. And I, Love this. And it's what I said earlier. And to tie into what Denise said is it's that, you know, you do have to work towards becoming a leader every single day. But when you come in, you purchase a product pack, you have a vision, right? You have a vision for yourself. You have a vision for the people that. Oh, no. Is she frozen for everybody? Oh no. <laughs> there you go. You're back. You're back. <laughs> Me? Yeah, it was you. It's fine. My internet. Are you still at your parents? Yep. <laughs> I do want to say something. I saw a question. Can you guys there. hear me? Um, you are breaking up. Oh no. It's okay. Everyone can hear her now? There you go. Can you hear me now? Um, so okay, there you go. I see a question. Should I answer now? Yes, absolutely. Because I am freezing. I am <laughs> so sorry. Pop but that's a really good question. Like me. It's how do you deal with someone? <laughs> go for it. Talking, you? Sorry, you froze for me. Okay. Um, how do you deal with someone who's becoming a leader, but won't take your leadership advice? Do you let them fail and come back? Um, I don't see like right there. I want to ask so many questions, right? It goes back to asking the questions because by you telling me that I want to know the side of the story, what have we advised them on and, and what are they not taking and how we communicate it to them? Like it really, I don't want to advise you in any way, but I would say overall in general, Um, sometimes I think we say some, you know, we might suggest a certain thing to a a situational, um, advice, and then they might not listen, but that's not because they don't want to listen or disagree. I just think in that moment, maybe they just don't see what you see. That's why I think it's important to, uh, to voice it so that you know, so that they know your interest in telling them this suggestion isn't in your favor. It's in theirs. You know, like you're not doing anything so that you get perks out of this. You're not doing anything so that it makes you feel better. It's about helping them. Like you're serving them. So as long as the voice, like how you're voicing it to them is clear, you know, I think that I'm not going to say sometimes everyone, like not, I've had to repeat myself multiple times. I'm sure Brittany had to repeat herself with me multiple times. You know, sometimes we have to be really repetitive, but that's also how you're going to create that pattern. Sometimes one of my favorite things, the girls know this, and I bet you every single one of you can relate. Um, I don't know if Dolly is on here, but I know she'll relate. Um, that when this happened at my nations, but you know, you say all these things, but then you, you might come on a call and then say, Jensen said something. And then you might go text in a chat and say, Oh my God, this really resonated with me when she said, and I want to like, 
I want to bash my head against the wall because I'm thinking I've been saying that for freaking three years. How are they not seeing that? But someone else said it and it really resonated with them, you know, or it just clicked or it just, it's like when your mom tells you like, you know, something for years and then you're like, um, you know, my friend said this and I feel like this is the best for me to do. And then suddenly your mom is like, well, I've been saying this like since you were born. So screw you, you know, but it's just some, and that's why I think it's also really good for your teams to be exposed to other leaderships. I don't care if the, the team call sucks. Honestly, sometimes if you feel like you disagree with how someone's leading or whatever, they might say something on that call that your team might take that they really couldn't have before they were on your calls. So you really can't make that decision for them. They have to be able to make the decisions um, on their own. Um, Jessica, that question, I don't even know how to answer because it really, again, is a situational thing. Do we as C SCDs work more than 40 hours would be my, uh, would, is your question? Like, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be working more than 40 hours a week. And then the, the perks of that is that I can just say I'm gone for two weeks whenever I want. You know, it, the perks of that is that I can just be absent for two days from Wednesday to Thursday. I'm not saying I'm completely unavailable to my girls, but I have that luxury. So that's a question for you. Do you want to be working more? I think for like, it depends on where you want to take this business. Personally, I thought I always would have enough every time we hit like a new goal and then I want more. And then I want to be able to do more for my family. I want to be able to do more for my team. I want them to be doing the same. I want them, I want their paychecks to be identical to mine. You know, like I want them to be doing the same for their girls. So 40 hours a week to me is like, also, I never worked 40 hours a week at my other job because it was usually like 80. So 40 sounds great. Um, uh, okay. I'll, should I just do two more? Yeah. Um, we have as much time as you can give us, Denise. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I feel like everyone's checked out after 45 minutes on these things. You know? <laughs> um, what's the best way to approach giving feedback to someone that needs to soften their approach when they are not very coachable? Um, it's not easy. I don't know. I don't know if there is a best approach, but I think that that's one of those situations where I constantly repeat, you know, where I'm like, hey, listen, you know, I don't want to... Um, step over my boundaries or like, Hey, I don't want to, you know, I think th that's why I say compliment their strength and then talk about what you're trying to approach and why you feel like if we do something a different way, it can help them with the problem that they're having, you know, just kind of showing the obvious, like, Hey, if we do it this way, this is what we can get. Like, and then I also, I'm a big, I'm a big open book. So I know that like my team can vouch for this and maybe sometimes I'm a little too open, but like, I'll say it. Like I kind of made that same mistake too, but if we do it this way, I promise you it helps so much more, you know, like, and I, I relate because there's so many scenarios that I know that we've all been in and we should be able to share that because they need to know that you've made those mistakes too. Or you um, had a scenario maybe that you maybe didn't personally make, but then you um, dealt with, with a, a different team, you know, just like, being relatable is also important, I think, when you're um, trying to kind of get that point across to someone who's maybe being difficult um, to be coachable. No, that's um, so good. I definitely want to add to that, Denise. Um, yeah, the compliment, complimenting and then giving them feedback is always the best way to lead. And Denise will know this because we actually were on a phone call last week and I said, hey, and I'm not, not to put you on the spot, I said, hey, you are so well-rounded, you know, you have such a great personality, this and this, I complimented and I said, here's what I see could make a difference in your business. And, you know, I think as a leader, you know that they're ready to keep growing when they can ask the question like, so what do you suggest? You know, what do you think or how do you think I can do that? And that's when you know you can delve in. And then if they don't, if they're not receptive, what you do is you just reiterate. This is what I'm hearing you saying. This is what I've heard in our last three conversations. I'm hearing that you're struggling with 
talking to market partners and closing the opportunity. Can you give me an example of something that you've said? They repeat it back and be like, okay, this is what I've heard. This is you repeating what they've said. Because now it's not you putting words in their mouth. It's you saying, this is what I heard you say to them. How do you think you would react to that mm -hmm. statement? Mm -hmm. How would you feel if you were approached that way? So I definitely feel like there's still an opportunity, even if they don't feel coachable, but always complimenting, giving them feedback, and then reiterating what they're saying and reiterating their act, you know, their their issue that you've heard maybe three times um, really helps them to see like, okay, you know what, Denise is right. Or you know what, Savannah, you're right. So that's a great question. Savannah has really good questions and I have, feel like I have to answer them. Um, the other one that I saw, well, I guess this isn't a question, but you know, if anybody feels like you look at them as um, a paycheck, wrong attitude, the behavior has got to shift, you know? Um, I'm so open about this. I'm like, I'm working with my level 15s. I, they don't benefit me. I was like, but I'm going to work with them because they want to work with me. You know, like, it, I don't care if they're impacting my paycheck. This is where you differentiate yourself as a leader. Are you serving others or are you serving yourself? So if you are not serving others, we got to improve our leadership and, and not be thinking about your paycheck or, um, you know, I talk about this all the time when I have girls that say like, well, yeah, I'm working with everybody and I need to, because I need this much volume or because I am like, no, focus on all the new girls that are going for MMP. Screw your volume. If we're not holding it, we're not holding it, but let's focus on growing your business partners. Let's help them make sure that they make their bonus check this month. It's not about us, you know? And I think that's where you've got to differentiate. So if someone thinks that of me, can't really let that thought get to you, you know? I'm not going to sit here and act like a tough guy because there are days where something might upset my feelings. And I always say, this is a business. We can't take things personally. However, sometimes, you know, we all have our weak moments as people. But if someone feels that way, that's just the wrong attitude. But, you know, again, you can approach it and say, like, you know, is it something that I had said that makes you feel that way? Do you only message them on the, at the end of the month? Like, what is the, like, what, what's, like, there's, again, I'm going to want to know so many things in order to give feedback to that. Um, but something that I saw that says, approaching someone that should pay a little more attention to how they show up on their stories while we encourage everyone to show up as they are. Don't just have to, don't have to always be made up. They should always pop. Listen, I think that um, social media and showing up, everyone's going to do it their own way, no matter what we preach, no matter what kind of training we offer, no matter what we say, you know, one way or another, the, the only thing you can worry about as a leader is doing your part, giving that feedback and making sure that you are delivering the messages that need to be like, you need to have those conversations and suggest how, or, and you know what, if, Honestly, if I were you guys, I, there is going to be a time where I'm going to screenshot it to Brittany and say, have I handled this situation properly? Is there something I could have said better? I don't care if I'm Essie. It doesn't matter what rank I am, right? I can still ask her an opinion. This person is not being coachable. Is there something I can do better? Maybe something I'm doing is wrong. You know, another outside party is going to give you feedback. So for something like that, you know, maybe you're constantly telling them to, 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 um, help them with their stories. There's something that we can do to improve maybe how you're approaching it. Um, and for Michelle's question, again, I'm like probably the worst person you should ask this to, but do you feel, do I feel like a leader should have business hours? Yes and no. I'm psycho. So I have like problems like Jensen thinks I have issues too. Um, I just would rather work all the time. Um, this, the last four days was the first time I left my house and left the city for three, four days. And my girls will be the girl, like or our team girls, guys will be the first ones to say, Oh my God, please don't work while you're away. I'm like, no, I'm here. Please text me if you need me. You know, like that's something that I just, I do think though, that we should be able to set our minds off and, and, um, it's healthy. Okay. You need to be able, if you work so hard, you should be able to enjoy a dinner without checking your phone constantly. Absolutely. But 
girl, just, you're just asking me. And I'm like someone who's like, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I'm not in a relationship. So I should be making time for creating a new relationship. But other than that, you know, everyone's life is different. Um, I'm just going to address this last one because I think it's one of the most crucial ones, how to separate friendship and leadership, like how to separate friendship and this business in general. It's so hard. It is not an easy one. It is so hard, but if you are, I, I, there's no like one easy tip that I can say. I feel like that's a call on its own. I felt like, I feel like Bianca has got to be on here. She's one of my best friends. We traveled together when we both quit our jobs together and traveling with your friends and working with your friends and being best friends with your friends. Can you imagine like we did everything and we spoke about everything together and it was the most challenging thing in our relationship. We probably both talked about it. We, we really felt like we were going to lose our friendship because you know, I would be frustrated if she wasn't, you know, agreeing with me or seeing my point of view. And then I felt like, you know, she was frustrated with me if we weren't getting the goal that we were going for. And I felt like, is it my fault? You know, and it just becomes, then you can't really, you don't really talk about um, things that, you know, you usually talk about, you're constantly talking about business, but you want to make sure that you're making time to also listen to them and talk to them like you normally did before. But the best advice I can give you is if as long as you are being coachable, it doesn't matter if your business partner is your upline or downline, as long as you're talking to each other, not at each other, as long as you are listening and working and growing together, and as long as you respect each other, that respect has to be there. Not because I signed you, like you also, I got to respect you. It doesn't matter. And same with all your business partners, but really with your friends, that's so crucial from the beginning, because as long as that is established, then, then, then you're, you can be freaking unstoppable together. But if you, um, let that get to you, that can obviously like be a challenge. And there's no way, like when, like I said, Brittany was one of my best friends when she signed me and it was not easy hearing her tell me, like, I, I would look for, like, I'm not someone who, uh, like, you know, um, looks for recognition like i don't need that but you know at the same time i'd be like oh she's gonna be so proud of this one you know like i would just like wait for her to be like wow good job and then if she didn't give me a good job because she's like me she's tough and she would give me the well i think yeah that was really great but i think what you can do to improve is and she would give me an area of opportunity and i would get super frustrated my first year now I'm like, oh yeah, challenge accepted, like game on, you know, I am going to work on that. I am going to do that. So I think it's just the way you, um, way you handle it, the way you take it and remember that it's just, it, this is a business at the end of the day. I agree. And the one thing I'll add to that in talking about leadership, the most humbling part about growing into leadership, what I'll say for me personally is asking for feedback as a leader. You know, if you're on this call and you're feeling challenged and you want to know what to do better, I think that's the biggest thing you could ever ask your team is, is there something I can do differently to support you? Is there something else so I can better support you? You know, are you finding that I'm not pr providing the support that you're looking for? And how can I show up in a way that, that works for you and that helps you? And just that alone, feeling heard, feeling listened to and seen, it, it makes such a huge difference. So I know even until this day, I will do an event. I will have a call. I will ask my boss. I will say, what do you think? Do you think that there's something I could improve upon? Because we as leaders also need to be able to take feedback so that we could better serve the people that we were serving. Mm -hmm. So I hope that helps. Denise, honestly, I feel like you killed it with your gold nuggets, your advice, your insight into being leaders. Um, and, you know, as far as the hours, here's what I'll say, Jessica. I started this business when my daughter was 10 months old. Um, I was in the direct sales industry as an independent rep, and that was my biggest thing, having more time for her, right? She's nine now, and I have never had to leave her, never. And that's the thing is that I feel like being present um in the time that i do have for her is what matters more than the amount of time 
if that makes sense. So even if I'm here at home and I'm working, and I know you said some, you had mentioned that you're a teacher or someone had mentioned that they're a teacher and you don't want to give that up. It's all about just prioritizing. We're never going to be perfect. We're never going to balance everything out perfectly. It's impossible. It's impossible for us to find a perfect balance in everything that we do, but it's where your passion lies. And so I don't necessarily see it as a time constraint when you're working in your business. It's because Denise, for example, she loves what she does. So when she puts in 60 hours, it's fine. Even I have to tell her, she'll text me. She's like, I'm on a boat. I'm sorry. And I'm like, why are you texting me back? <laughs> Don't even text me back. If you are on a bo boat, I'm like, go enjoy yourself. Like you have to be able to set boundaries for yourself. And that's the biggest thing. While you're setting expectations for your team, set expectations for yourself as to when you are available and when you are going to shut off. So I want you all to be able to connect with Denise. She'd be so proud of me. Denise, aren't you proud of me? Yeah, yeah, but you got my Instagram name wrong now that I notice. Yeah, I did on here. You but know, an area I, of opportunity for you would be. No, I'm just there you I'm go. So there you go. Look, I spelled it wrong here, but up here where <laughs> her actual Instagram page is, you guys, this is an area of opportunity. Mind you, I texted this to her and said, hey, does this look good? And she didn't catch it then. So I didn't. we're yeah. both in the wrong, we're both in the wrong. Um, but this is how you can connect with Denise. She's incredible. Again, creative genius. That's actually what I had on her fun fact. She's a creative genius and see, even I mess okay. up, I said marketing. But thank you so much for joining. I hope you found this super helpful and um, we just look forward to seeing you grow in leadership. Remember, this is an ongoing thing. And I'll leave you with this. I got this in my text inbox um, from Brendan Bruchard. If you're failing to implement something you already know you can do, your progress is limited to only what you know today. It's time to look towards the future. So I just love that. I love that it dropped in my inbox during this. So thank you both. Have a great thank Monday. You. Thanks Get so your Monations Impact Ticket and have a great end of month. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Denise. Thank you.